Hi, my name's Stephen, and today we're looking at Luke chapter 6, verses 12 to 38. And I've got a hard job of choosing where we should camp out for the next couple of minutes, uh, which is difficult because there's so much we could explore in these verses. We've got Jesus healing the sick, Jesus casting out demons, Jesus gathering together a crowd for his famous sermon about the Beatitudes, this kind of upside down worldview about how to live the blessed life. Uh, we've got Jesus teaching about how to respond to our enemies and also about how not to judge other people. All things that are worthy of our time and attention. But I've chosen for us to look at Jesus choosing his apostles. So there's a few verses 12 to 16 which teaches us about how he does this. And uh, it might be easy for us just to skip over it and uh, thinking maybe the uh, uh, maybe Luke, the author, just included it as just a nice bit of narrative or give us some context about who's involved in the story. Uh, but no, actually, there's things for us to learn in these few verses about who Jesus is, how he operates and about uh, who he operates through as well. So I just want us to learn two lessons from this uh, today as we look at these verses. The first lesson is begin with prayer and uh, it says this in these days these are the days where jesus is ministering in his kind of home region of galilee and uh it says in these days he went up uh, went out to the mountains to pray and all night he continued to pray to god to continue in prayer to god this is a, a pattern that we see in jesus life uh, here in the book of luke but also in the other gospels as well where jesus would take himself off get some silence get some solitude and seek his heavenly father and there's something in kind of christ's humility in the way he does ministry where he wants to uh, get time with his father see what his father is doing and uh, speak with him as we as he goes he's not off just making his own decisions of anyone you think jesus could do that he's the son of god uh, but he humbles himself to say no i do life in community uh, move together with my heavenly father so he goes off and finds some space with which to do that and away from his disciples, away from the crowds and gets time with God. He even has to spend time in the middle of the night. I think for Jesus, uh, so busy, uh, so often uh, his time, kind of time is demanded by other people. They have to go and find a space to do that. And we have to do that too. What does it look like for you and me? Well, maybe for us, it is going out for a walk, uh, maybe up into the downs or maybe along the seafront. Or maybe for us, it's just going to a quiet space in our homes. And uh, just closing the laptop, putting our phone out of reach, maybe the phone in next door if you're a bit like me, easily distracted. And uh, just get some silence, some solitude and time with God. Taking your Bible. For me, I take a pen and paper as well. And uh, just slow down enough to seek God. And why should we seek him? Well, we're seeking him because we want his voice in our lives. We want him speaking to us. And uh, we need wisdom and guidance for all kinds of things. In the same way that Jesus did. Jesus here, he's picking the men in which he's going to build his church upon. He's going to live with them for three years and then kind of send them off to uh, establish the church right across the globe and affect eternity. And so it's an important decision that Jesus has to make. And so he wants to slow down enough to speak to his heavenly father about that. I think when I'm uh, faced with an important decision, my temptation is twofold. One, to go and ask everyone for their advice, get their input. Oh, I've got this thing to sort out. What would you say? What would you, what would you do? That kind of thing. Or the other thing I do is I just Google it. And uh, maybe you're the same. And not, not that there isn't a place for Googling things or asking people for advice. But I want to have a rhythm like Jesus, where the first thing I do is go and speak to my heavenly father. Knowing the way to him is open because of Jesus' work and invite him in. Like Jesus, like Solomon, who I'm reading about in my own time uh, Bible reading at the moment, that they are, they, they seek God, they seek him for his wisdom, knowing that he loves them and loves to give guidance, loves to give wisdom. And as we look at the scriptures, as we ask the Holy Spirit to prompt us uh, that he can speak to us about the things that are going on in our lives. And this is a wonderful kind of thing to do. Prayer is a, a, a humility thing. It's about saying, I haven't got everything I need. Like Jesus, like Solomon, I've got enough wisdom to know that I need outside counsel. I want to need God's counsel to live the life that he's given me to live. So I want to find a new rhythm for that. So what decisions have you got to make right now? Maybe it's a house move. Maybe it's what you do next in education. Maybe it's something to do with finances or jobs or relationships. Have you prayed about them? Not that prayer of like, oh, I've made a decision already. Maybe I should invite God into it. 
or you know I've asked everyone else already so you know maybe I should ask God as well no but getting to a rhythm where he's your first port of call where you literally do begin with prayer we often mention beginning with prayer at Emmanuel when it comes to uh, reaching other people with the gospel but actually we want to begin with prayer in every area of our life so that's the first lesson second lesson is who does Jesus choose well he chooses a mixed bag of people and again, we might not pick up on this straight away as 21st century Brightonians reading this. Uh, but when you read it in the first century, in, the, in, the, in that kind of context, you'd see that these people are so different. You've got young, you've got old, you've got rich, you've got poor, you've got people who live in the country, people who live in the city, we've got fishermen, we've got tax collectors. We've got all kinds of people with different experiences and backgrounds. And Jesus takes them and brings them together. And uh, he's bringing them together because he knows that's the best way to bring us, build a strong team, to build a team of people who are different and who complement each other. And I read a lot of kind of leadership books and team leadership and business leadership. And uh, wisdom would say that's a great way to build, to have complementary teams where they're united around a cause or a particular purpose. You can have different types of people that then bring their different uh, skills and experiences, their weaknesses and strengths to bear. And actually build a better, more cohesive team by having different people rather than having a homogenous one. People of all the kinds of different backgrounds. And hopefully as I grow as a leader, more and more I'm trying to encourage different people to come in and help us with this. Now, in one sense, they're, they're similar guys, similar apostles and disciples. They're all men and they're all Jewish. But really, that is where it stops because they are very different. Let's just take two people as an example. One is Simon the Zealot, who... Um, is zealously uh, opposing the Roman occupation of uh, Judea, of Israel, and uh, wants them out and very actively is seeking that. And he would see them as a real uh, force of, of evil and uh, wants them gone. And so uh, he's being brought into this apostle team with who? Matthew, the tax collector. Matthew, who is working for those Roman oppressors, has literally lined up with them, stands for everything that Simon doesn't stand for. They're different ends of the spectrum, but Jesus brought them together. So I think it's so important to recognise when we live in such a polemic times where people have such different views and are made worse by social media and uh, kind of groupthink and, uh, and uh, kind of feeding ourselves with the same stuff and the algorithm is not kind of thing. And uh, that I think, oh, I can never be friends with those other people. And she's saying, no, you can be literally opposite ends of the political spectrum, but because of Jesus, you can know genuine unity, genuine community, not because you change your view, but because there's something bigger, something greater to unite around. And what could be a cause of strife can actually be a cause of something really quite beautiful. Yes, good organisational uh, wisdom around having different people, but something more than that, something to demonstrate to the world that uh, Christ brings unity, brings community, and that God loves diversity and uh, he doesn't kind of, rough, uh, kind of ride roughshod over it, no, no, but he's able to manage all of that within the broadness of who Christ is and brings people together. Other religions, other cults even, uh, might have a uniform, a way you're meant to dress and speak and do things. But when you look at Christianity, in every time and place, it looks different. The, the truths of it never change, uh, but the way expressed are many and varied. Very, very, uh, as, as different as, as many people are different and different cultures and different places. And it's something beautiful that all those things can come together all under the headship of Christ. And I know that just at a very personal level, being in church, being in small groups with people who I would never have uh, associated with in normal life. You know, we might live in Brighton, but that might be the only thing that would uh, mark us out as similar. But being in a small group, realizing different backgrounds and uh, uh, professions and uh, ethnicity, different skin colour, actually doesn't preclude us from being not just friends, uh, but brothers and sisters in Christ. People who I've been shared my most vulnerable moments with, who I know love me and uh, point me back to Jesus. And together we get to express something of God uh, to the world around us. So let me encourage you, begin with prayer with the things you've got going on in your life right now. And why don't you spend a few moments just thanking God for the community that he's brought you into, that we can express something to the world and we might be joined together to establish his kingdom uh, upon the earth. What an amazing privilege. Have a great day.